In a world filled with ancient mysteries and biblical tales, one story has captivated scholars and believers for centuries. The destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. For years, scientists and historians have debated the truth behind their demise. Now, groundbreaking research has uncovered compelling evidence that sheds new light on this age-old mystery. Just have a look at this. Long story short, they find massive evidence that a huge heat blast from the sky at about 25 degrees above the horizon incinerated these twin cities on the Jordanian side of the river what? just north of the Dead Sea. Yeah. But what exactly caused the downfall of Sodom? How did its demise come about? Was it a natural disaster, divine intervention, or something else entirely? And how do recent discoveries challenge our previous understanding of this enigmatic event? Well, join us as we delve into the latest findings and explore the fascinating theories that may finally reveal the truth behind one of history's most enduring mysteries. And trust me, you're not going to want to miss the shocking new discovery revealed at the end of this video. For centuries, the story of Sodom and Gomorrah has been dismissed as mere mythology by skeptics and scholars alike. You see, many folks out there have questioned the validity of this biblical tale. It sounds like something straight out of a fantastical book, right? I mean, a city being obliterated by fire and brimstone from the heavens just because its people were disobedient? It seems too far-fetched to be true. But what if I told you that there is compelling evidence suggesting otherwise? What if I told you that there's a man who claims to have not only found the location of Sodom and Gomorrah, but also unearthed evidence supporting their existence. Yeah, you heard me right. Dr. Stephen Collins is his name, and his discoveries are about to change everything we thought we knew about these ancient cities. But before we dive into the specifics, we first need to understand the biblical significance of Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah are infamous cities known for their sinful ways as described in the Bible's book of Genesis. According to the scripture, these cities, along with Adma, Zeboim, and Zor, formed what was known as the Cities of the Plain. Their wickedness was so great that God decided to destroy them with sulfur and fire. In the Genesis account, God informs Abraham of his plan to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah due to their grave sins. Abraham, concerned for the righteous people living in the cities, including his nephew Lot and his family, pleads with God to spare them. He negotiates with God, asking if the cities can be spared if a certain number of righteous people are found. God agrees to spare the cities, even if just 10 righteous people are found. To assess the righteousness of the cities, two angels, disguised as men, are sent to Sodom to visit Lot. However, upon their arrival, they are met with a wicked mob who demand to know the identity of the newcomers. In an attempt to protect his guests, Lot offers his daughters to the mob but they refuse and become enraged. The angels then strike the mob with blindness. Realizing the extent of the city's wickedness, the angels warn Lot to gather his family and flee before the impending destruction. As they leave, Lot's wife disobeys the warning and looks back at the city, resulting in her being turned into a pillar of salt. The Quran also contains a similar account of the destruction of the cities, although they are not mentioned by name. Abraham, known as Ibrahim in Islamic tradition, pleads with God on behalf of Lot's people, but is told that the punishment cannot be avoided. Lot is saddened by the fate of his people and offers his daughters to the mob, just as in the biblical narrative. He is instructed to leave the city with his followers under the cover of night, and he is warned that his wife will suffer the same fate as the rest of the inhabitants. The cities are ultimately destroyed by stones raining down from the sky. But here's where things start to get shocking. Now, for decades, the prevailing wisdom among scholars and historians has been that Sodom and Gomorrah are nothing more than mythological constructs. But Dr. Collins begs to differ. Armed with a background of archaeology and a meticulous eye for detail, he embarked on a journey to uncover the truth behind this ancient mystery. Uh, I mean, it literally took like it looks like somebody took the entire constant contents of the city, threw it in a, a blender and hit the button. It's that churned up and destroyed. Mm. And that includes people as well, bits and pieces of people. Now, before we delve into the details, let's address the elephant in the room. Why does it even matter if Sodom and Gomorrah were real? Why is there so much skepticism surrounding the story of Sodom and Gomorrah? 
Well, for starters, it's a biblical tale, and in today's secular world, many people dismiss anything from religious texts as mere mythology. Also, it could reshape our understanding of history and religion as we know it. If these cities did exist, and were indeed destroyed as the Bible claims, it raises profound questions about divine intervention, morality, and the consequences of human behavior. But here's where things get really interesting. Dr. Collins didn't just stumble upon Sodom and Gomorrah by chance. No, his findings are based on careful analysis of ancient texts, geographical data, and archaeological evidence. And guess what? It all points to one conclusion. Sodom and Gomorrah were real, and their destruction was not merely a figment of someone's imagination. But wait, there's more. Dr. Collins challenges this assumption by pointing out that ancient texts, including the Bible, rarely invent fictitious geographies. So if the Bible mentions specific locations like Sodom and Gomorrah, there's a good chance they were real places. But Dr. Collins isn't just challenging the skeptics, he's also taking on the traditionalists within Christianity. You see, for over a century, even within religious circles, there's been a prevailing belief that Sodom and Gomorrah were located near the southern end of the Dead Sea, based on the work of scholars like Dr. Albright. However, Dr. Collins isn't buying it. He disagrees with Dr. Albright's assessment, arguing that it lacks solid evidence from the biblical text itself. Instead, he proposes a different location based on his extensive research and archaeological findings. So why does this matter? Well, for starters, it challenges our preconceived notions about the Bible and its historical accuracy. It forces us to reconsider what we thought we knew and to approach ancient texts with a fresh perspective. But perhaps more importantly, it reminds us that the search for truth is an ongoing journey, one that requires an open mind and a willingness to question the status quo. Now, I know what you're thinking. How can we trust Dr. Collins's findings? After all, isn't he just another archaeologist with an agenda? Well, here's the thing. Dr. Collins isn't just relying on his own interpretations. He's using a rigorous scientific approach, cross-referencing multiple sources and subjecting his findings to peer review. Now, let's address another challenge to the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, the moral implications. The biblical account describes these cities as centers of sin and debauchery, with rampant homosexuality among their inhabitants. In today's world, where issues of morality and sexuality are highly sensitive topics, the idea of God punishing people for their behavior is often met with resistance. But Dr. Collins urges us to consider a different perspective. He suggests that the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah wasn't just a punishment for their sins, but also a warning to future generations about the consequences of disobedience to God's laws. And while this may clash with modern worldviews, it's essential to approach the topic with an open mind and a willingness to consider all the evidence. So what exactly has Dr. Collins discovered about Sodom and Gomorrah? Well, his research has uncovered compelling evidence of a Bronze Age city in the region that fits the description of Sodom. This city was once the largest continuously occupied settlement in the area, further supporting the idea that it could indeed be the biblical Sodom. Just take a look at this. One of the first big things we discovered was the gateway of Sodom. We actually think we have the, there's actually a stone bench in that gateway uh, and some some rooms inside were uh, a pillar actually a pillared entry hall that um, where lot would have sat so that was pretty cool to be able to actually discover the gateway of sodom mentioned in genesis 19 1. now if you thought that was crazy just wait until you hear the next part geological and archaeological data point strongly to a sudden and intense destruction consistent with the biblical account of fire and brimstone raining down from heaven. Enter Dr. John Bergsma, a theologian from Ohio's Franciscan University, who has joined forces with archaeologists to unravel the truth behind the biblical tale of Sodom's destruction. Their journey led them to the ruins of Tal el Hammam, nestled in the southern Jordan Valley, a once thriving city that vanished without a trace over 3,600 years ago. And just take a look at this. He sends this away to a lab in the US and uh, for testing, and they come back and say, well, that glazing is trinitite. Okay, great, what's trinitite? Well, trinitite is that uh, that that glass layer that you get when you basically set off an atomic bomb in the desert and it melts the glass and mm. you get a kind of 
crystalline formation that's called trinitite. So this pottery was raised to over 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit for a brief moment of time. But this is not even the most interesting part. It's about to get a lot more shocking. Tal el Hammam's disappearance has long perplexed archaeologists. This thriving city surpassed even Jerusalem and Jericho in size and influence. Yet, its sudden disappearance has baffled experts for centuries. Unlike other ancient cities ravaged by warfare, the ruins exhibit no signs of military conflict or siege, hinting at a different, cataclysmic fate. Instead, the evidence pointed to a different, more catastrophic cause. Bergsmar's interest was sparked by a startling discovery. Evidence of extreme heating on skeletal remains and pottery fragments scattered across the site. This heat damage, he theorized, could be attributed to an asteroid impact, a theory supported by biblical accounts of fire and brimstone raining down upon Sodom and Gomorrah. The presence of trinitite, a glass-like substance formed by the intense heat of atomic bomb explosions on pottery fragments further bolstered Bergsmar's theory. It suggested that a high-energy event akin to an asteroid impact had occurred in the area. But perhaps the most chilling discovery was that of human remains. Skeletons unearthed at Tal el Hammam showed signs of extreme heat, with scorch marks stopping abruptly halfway up the backbone, indicating a blast from the sky that incinerated the twin cities below. Stephen Collins, the principal archaeologist at Tal el Hammam, likened the devastation to the Tunguska event of 1908, a massive asteroid explosion over Siberia that flattened trees for miles around. He proposed that the airburst at Tal el Hammam may have been even more powerful, with energy levels surpassing that of the Hiroshima atomic bomb. The aftermath of the event was equally eerie. Significant amounts of salt were found scattered across the site, a phenomenon mirroring the biblical account of Lot's wife being turned into a pillar of salt. James Kennett, an earth science professor, explained that the impact may have partially hit the nearby Dead Sea, rich in salt, causing it to rain down upon the devastated landscape. While some skeptics have dismissed these findings as mere speculation, Bergsma remains steadfast in his belief. He sees Dal el Hammam as tangible evidence of a historical event a stark reminder that the truth can often be stranger than fiction. It really changed my perspective on the Old Testament map, Bergsma reflected. What it pointed out to me is that things that sounded too outlandish to be history are actually shown to be a historical event. The revelations at Tal el Hammam have reignited debates among scholars and theologians alike. However, the exact nature of the destruction and the extent of the city's wickedness remain topics of speculation and interpretation. Some theories suggest natural disasters, such as earthquakes or volcanic eruptions, while others propose divine intervention as the cause. Regardless of the interpretation, the story of Sodom and Gomorrah continues to capture the imagination of people around the world. It serves as a reminder of the importance of living a righteous and virtuous life, lest one face the consequences of disobedience. Now, what do you think? Was the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah a divine punishment, as the biblical account suggests? Or was it the result of a natural disaster, such as an asteroid impact, as modern research indicates?